The Wings for Life World Run 2014 is no ordinary race. The format is revolutionary as there is no finishing line. And across six continents and 32 countries, runners from over 164 nationalities run for those who can't. 34 locations all started at exactly the same time. They won't finish the same time. I'm nervous but excited. I hope they are too. And they're off. Over 35,000 people running at the same time across the globe, raising funds and awareness to find a cure for spinal cord injuries. Finding a cure is a matter of when, not if. The catcher cars are unique to this competition. Runners set their own goal and attempt to stay ahead of the catcher car, starting 30 minutes after the runners have started around the world. Each hour, the car speeds increases. The goal for the athlete is to run the furthest distance. But once passed by the catcher car, their race is over and their distance marks their final position and world ranking. I mean, this is spectacular. This is what it's all about now. The back end of the race, we're seeing the real quality athletes, the ultra runners really, just demonstrating their real skills. Not many times we have the opportunity to see what they can do, but this is definitely a phenomenal race. And reaching the 50 kilometer mark, there were just three female athletes left in the run, South Africa and France, but Norway were to come out on top with the 18-year-old Elise Molvik, 54.79 kilometers to take the global female prize. It was a little bit hard to not have a finish line, but it was pretty cool as well. At the 70 kilometer mark, the catcher car starts to reel in the elite athletes in the men's competition. The most spectacular performance came from Limawok Ketamar of Ethiopia, running 78.58 kilometers to take the men's global prize with a traditional Ethiopian sprint finish. It was a very nice race. Yeah, I'm very happy. The Wings for Life World Run will be back again, May the 3rd, 2015.